New season of America just dropped. We are no longer just an economic zone where anyone in the world can flood into the country to pick at the bones of our civilization. Now we are also a rights zone where a federal judge has ruled that anyone in the world upon flooding into the country is actually free to carry a firearm because that's constitutional, which is to say that is actually the outcome that the founding fathers intended for in writing that document. I know that may raise some red flags, but this decision, which of course came from an Obama appointed federal judge, it was actually praised by our annoying little brother, our cousin who never quite grew up, never quite figured it out, the online libertarians who were celebrating criminals accessing firearms as some victory for freedom. They've, I guess, outsmarted this far left judge who was unknowingly given us a real patriot victory on a brass platter. I mean, I don't know what to say. This is, of course, not the case. There's something sinister afoot, which is why I am issuing a real patriot alert. We are in serious patriot trouble right now. All this human rights communist gobbledygook, right? If no human being is illegal, that is, by the way, the governing belief of our country right now. So everyone gets to come here because if a human being could conceivably be illegal, we would enforce those laws. But there's virtually no effort to because those in charge believe that's an impossibility. So no human being is illegal. We put the signal up, come on in, and, you know, Mexico and the cartels escort you. It's all paid for and coordinated by these networks of NGOs, cartels, elite types, etc. So we let the whole world in, basically. And if everyone here is entitled to these natural rights, then we have to wonder, is everyone in the world equally capable of exercising these rights? That's what we're taught. Yeah, you know, the system can work for anyone. It's just that the English were accidentally the first to figure it out. But it can work for anyone. And if we just snapped our fingers and everyone in the world suddenly had a gun, the world would actually be a less violent place because, as I'm sure you know, more guns equals less crime. But, you know, the left, they don't they don't want to have that conversation. So now you see what's going on at the border. Literally, the seal is bursting, people flooding into the country. And you might say to yourself, wow, they're like invaders. No, that's that's half empty. Half full says that they are Second Amendment respecters. They are fellow humans who just want to exercise their rights in our right zone. They want admission to the theme park. That's why we don't let the armed guards do their job. Because seriously, we've like invented this idea that we have an obligation to other people. Human rights, that's not a real thing. That's not a concept. That's not like a thing that we're all aware of like some objective phenomena where if you explained it to someone from another country they'd be like oh yeah yeah our word for that is just this no they'd be totally confused you wouldn't even make sense to them like computer we ordinateur we let the whole world in Quite, well actually you know they kind of have to do that too over in france don't they recalls a silly little book come to think of it you get the point though this obligation to the whole world that's a uniquely western idea no other people in the world practice that let alone if it would mean the collapse of their civilization and now we're gonna arm them and gun laws will be enforced just like now against only american patriots and christians really need to understand this there's nothing virtuous about collapsing your civilization there's nothing christ-like about suicide so we will go over all this nonsense about human rights whatever that means uh, an updated truth about the Second Amendment, what gun ownership actually is and means in this country, why the left suddenly wants to democratize access to guns, why libertarians think this is good, which is because they're stupid, why libertarians are stupid, what we can expect going forward as the country with the greatest civilian arms stockpile becomes overrun with the third world, and what you should do as a sensitive young man to prepare going forward. Do stay tuned. If you don't stay tuned, I'm going to shoot. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. You know, I've always been offended by this idea that anyone can come to America and if they just agree to our values or whatever, it means they're just as American as everybody else who's had families here for generations, sometimes even centuries. But now it's transitioning from offense to like imminent emergency situation because now it's not that they just get to wear the title or whatever, but also that federal judges are maneuvering to grant them access to firearms using a ridiculous interpretation of an amendment, which was written largely to allow Americans to defend themselves from uh, the uncivilized. <clears throat> One moment, I have to share something with you. Big announcement week continues. I'm getting sick of this crap. Hey, Doyle! Pick your website. Hey, it's Doyle. Need your help. Say no more. Trump and the MAGA Republicans represented extreme.
Yes, it's real and it's true. The website is live. Many have been asking about this. You can go check it out. Go sign up if you want more content. Go access all the cool stuff. Go join the Discord server. But anyways, let's start from the beginning here. So Sharon Coleman is a district court judge appointed by Barack Obama. She's ruled on things such as making same-sex marriage legal in Illinois before the Supreme Court would get around to it a year later. She suddenly decided that she is a pro-Second Amendment constitutionalist. So you had this illegal alien who was charged with illegally possessing a concealed handgun. It works its way up. Now this woman has ruled that it's actually constitutional for illegal aliens to possess firearms. We're not going to get into the obvious problems with this. If you don't get it, then you shouldn't be here. I don't have anything to say to you, but I hope that this does sort out any faith that people still may have in the rule of law, the Constitution, or whatever. All respect to the Constitution, a piece of paper is not going to save you. The amount of hate that these people have for you is not going to be impeded or restrained by words on paper. Like, when has that worked out? When the bad guys have the power and they decide that it's good for women to be sexually emancipated or whatever, when it's good to make it illegal to hire people based on merit, when it's good to import third world criminals who have average IQs of like 80, let them carry firearms, then they discover something in the constitution that permits that. And by the way, good for them just means bad for us. Like they don't even advertise themselves as being capable of raising the standard of living anymore. Like all of their messaging is just that they want to make people like us miserable. That's why Brandon is campaigning now on J6. That's why he launched his campaign in 2020 because of Charlottesville. It's all just about punishing us. But yeah, there's no such thing as the rule of law. Never has been. It all comes down to who is in charge, who is enforcing that law, who is interpreting that law. And we've been operating on this myth that this is not the case. And so, of course, we've been completely flanked. And I know we've covered that extensively already, but still. Um, and I also want to start by clarifying that I am pro Second Amendment. I don't support any regulations that you hear about in the news all the time. Everything that the founding fathers thought about guns, would think about guns. I'm right there with you. And I have to say that now because people tend to be very antsy about guns. Are you coming to take it? Are you coming to take it? Status, status. Just relax. All right, buddy. We're on the same team. Just hear me out. The timing of this ruling, though, is interesting because I've been thinking a lot about constitutional carry laws recently. And I've sort of been developing this theory that the only reason the initiative has been so successful, because with any conservative agenda that is successful, it's usually only successful because it's allowed to be. So you kind of have to wonder why that is. And with constitutional carry, meaning that you can just carry a firearm without a license. I've decided that the reason it's been so successful is probably much less about caring about the Constitution and much more about just reducing the ability for criminals to run into problems if they're carrying a gun. Because a lot of times when you've got details that are shady, you know, it's tough to prosecute these people, whether it's because of the district attorneys, weak evidence, regulations, activists, lawyers, clerical incompetence, racial pressures, all this stuff. So sometimes simply being in illegal possession of a firearm can go a long way. But if everyone is simply allowed to carry a firearm because all of a sudden we really care about what the Founding Fathers think, is that actually going to make for a safer society? Not that the Founding Fathers would agree with this illegal ruling thing. They would think you're an insane person. But still, we're supposed to suddenly think that the Constitution, respecting the Constitution, is actually what's at play here. And we're going to get into all the gun ownership and crime arguments in just a second. But just think about the type of person that is actually being affected by these laws. Most gun owners tend to be responsible people who are probably not going to think it's the end of the world if they have to apply for a concealed pistol license and attend a class, etc. Well, but it's my right. I shouldn't have to do that. Okay, I know. I'm just saying, with the types of people we have in America right now, who is actually going to benefit from this? So I looked it up. I'm like, why are constitutional carry laws good? And all the answers were, because government restricting freedom is bad. Full stop. Okay, sure, yes, but they do it every day. We have to be a little bit more realistic because you people also say that the only way to get the government to stop restricting freedom is to go 1776 mode, but then you all sat inside your house for two years while they locked us down. You didn't do anything, which is the greatest tyranny in this country's history and probably even the history of the world. I mean, even the Bolsheviks weren't breaking up private gatherings for grandma's birthday, and I'm not casting stones here. I don't believe that revolution, civil war, I don't believe that is nearly as plausible as we all like to fantasize about, which I think we'll be discussing soon because they're making a movie about it, so trust. I'm just saying that I think we should think about things with a little bit more realism and not just LARP. So I found an organization which works towards this kind of stuff, and they said it's important because it restores Second Amendment rights to people who may not be able to afford classes and a permit and a background check. Sounds like a leftist resource scarcity argument, but I digress. And for context, constitutional carry is pretty much a red state, purple state phenomenon. That's very important here. So then here's a question. Do you really want somebody 
who can't afford to take a class to be able to carry a concealed handgun legally, think about that type of person who can't afford or who can't even figure out how to fill out some paperwork. That's who you now want being granted new access to guns. It's like in contemporary America where you're paying more for certain restaurants, certain airlines, not because the quality is necessarily better, but because you're trying to distance yourself from people who can only afford the cheaper options. That's a diversity tax that you're paying. Does that translate anywhere else, do we think? Oh, but criminals don't follow laws. Don't you know that? Right. That doesn't necessarily mean that we just pitch the laws, though. That means we charge criminals and put them in jail, right? I mean, the type of person who is responsible enough to carry a concealed firearm is probably not going to view a class as a significant impediment. I had to take one. I wish I didn't, but I also live in the real world, and I can think about things beyond just spazzing about my freedom or whatever. So, and I know you're not going to like this, but stay with me. Hold on. Ask yourself this. Given our circumstances right now, is it better to direct right-wing resources into this or to maybe installing our own district attorneys who will actually prosecute criminals. How many millions of dollars are we spending funding this kind of stuff, which I don't believe actually helps us except maybe on the margins. I think it's only allowed because again, it disarms the prosecution to the extent that prosecution even occurs versus what we spend actually trying to restore order to our cities. Who is more empowered by this? I can't imagine someone who is serious about their right to self-defense who wouldn't just go take the class, but I can imagine a lot of criminals who now feel more empowered to just freely drive around with a handgun and if police find them, so what? And obviously I don't support May issue states. I don't support what you see in blue states, but I'm just saying that my hunch is that constitutional carry is being increasingly allowed because it allows criminals to more freely just carry guns around with them on their person in their day to day. That's like my tinfoil hat, you know, in solid blue states where they don't prosecute actual crime, they'll have gun laws to disarm you specifically because yes, actual criminals don't follow laws, but those blue states will still prosecute you for defending yourself. But now these red purple states, which are coming around to constitutional carry states where maybe we do still prosecute crime or maybe some actual criminals could go to jail. Well, now all of a sudden they're saying, well, it shouldn't be a crime to carry a gun because all of a sudden we care about the constitution. That's the difference. Very interesting. So in blue states where gun laws are only enforced against you, you've got to jump through a million hoops, but in red or purple states where maybe we could actually get some justice. Hey, don't worry, Patriot. We've got your back now. Anyone can carry a gun. And now even, even the illegal Patriots can carry guns too. Less crime, right? Amigo. Don't you remember we're shipping busloads of illegal patriots to your state so they can practice their God-given right to self-defense, brother. Not like in those blue states, brother, where they have to deal with big government. Do you see the problem here? Very, very not muy bien. Um, obviously, again, I'm pro-Second Amendment, but I have to be suspicious of any sudden attempt to democratize access to firearms because it's not like they'd let that happen if it were really a threat to them, right? Maybe our guys realize we've reached critical mass and we're just trying to spend all political capital to distribute resources in preparation. Maybe it's actually more of a threat to us us. Maybe it's meant to hurt us. Maybe that's also why the legal system is democratizing access to guns, even to non-citizens. You have to understand when the snake is defending itself. Now on to the libertarian snakes who have never and who will never defend themselves. They were enthused about this ruling because they want to arm migrants. This is because they are my second amendment absolutists, my heckin pew pews. It's the only axiom of their worldview. You are either pro my heckin shooty sticks or you're a fascist, communist, authoritarian, statist, commie tyrant. Like that, that is how they view the world because they're egalitarians at their core. They're liberals. They believe that the founding fathers wrote the constitution to enshrine God-given rights, meaning everyone gets these rights. And America is like this zone for this enforcement of this, this access to natural rights, God-given rights, et cetera. They believe that when I own a gun, it's the same thing as when a Haitian owns a gun because there's no labels. There's no borders. There's only gun owner. And if the Haitian and I are both gun owners, well, then we're the same in the eyes of the libertarian. And actually, the libertarian would sooner ally with the Haitian, the Haitian alien, than, than with John Doyle, because John Doyle's mean, and he doesn't think that James Madison had the Haitian alien in mind when he wrote the Second Amendment, which means that John Doyle wants to restrict the rights of people like a freaking authoritarian which means that he's a bad guy. Uh, and if you said this to a founding father, they probably would have had you hanged, of course. But as if they, you know, would have just armed the Indians, they would have given guns to the Indians because of these God-given rights, these natural rights. Why would they arm the people trying to conquer them? Well, they were the invaders first. They're occupying stolen land. Yeah, based. 
I don't know why you're like five years old and think you're exposing some profound double standard. It's based in red pilled when we do it, and it's cringe and gay and illegal when they do it. Like that's how the game is played. You don't arm the invaders. Principles are abstractions that you and your cool friends agree upon when the war is over. But the war is not over, is it? But you can't explain this to a libertarian because the libertarian psychology is like the worst thing you can imagine. And I may do a video in the future explaining this more in depth, why I stopped being a libertarian when I was like 16. But for now, we will simply mock on them. And for what it's worth, I like the paleo libertarians. I have a lot of respect and admiration for a lot of libertarians. I don't even reject the philosophy behind it necessarily. It would probably work pretty well in a country of like 130 IQ Anglo-Saxons, but that's not what we're dealing with. The problem with the libertarian is that they are delusional. They are not connected to reality. They assume like the perfectibility of the individual. They think only in ought, not in is. And it manages to simultaneously combine immaturity, classlessness, downward mobility, vulgarity, egalitarianism, these democratic impulses. It's like if the Powerpuff Girls dad were in a lab trying to make like the world's biggest idiot. And then that's what it is. It's some like 45 year old divorced dad who smokes weed and simps for e-girls on Twitter. And he spends his time being mad at statists and collectivists. What planet are you on? Did you just call me a collectivist? In 2024, these people, I, uh, how do you dress yourself? I mean, who helped you put the graphic tee on this morning? And the synthesis of that, by the way, its product is ideas and discourse like this, the antithesis of everything that we're trying to do and why so much waste occurs on our side is because of this cancerous infection from libertarianism. It's like in Portal 2, remember when GLaDOS tells you the scientists developed the core to do nothing but distract her with the stupidest ideas conceivable to prevent her from becoming too powerful? That's the best way to understand libertarians. That's why they don't get deplatformed, but yours truly did two years in Twitter jail before Elon Musk bought it. Speaking of which, there was this video going around recently. You see these all the time, though. And it was a bunch of black people in Chicago. They're walking down the street, brandishing their firearms. You know, and I said something like, libertarians will see this and be like, hell yeah. Just a bunch of open carry advocates exercising their Second Amendment rights. And libertarians were actually replying to that tweet with like the yes meme, like the Giga Chad. It's over. It's literally over. We're not just an economic zone. We've, we're also like an arms trafficking zone. The only problem the libertarian has is that they don't have grenade launchers and M60s. Literally. Like, that's actually what these people believe. The Louisiana Libertarian Party was getting in on this. They don't believe in borders. They don't really have a problem with LGBT stuff because of my freedom. Remember when they booed Gary Johnson because he said that driver's licenses are probably a good idea? Like, they're the least serious people in politics, truly. I mean that. Like, guns are tools, right? That's what we say. Guns are tools of the gun owner. But are all gun owners the same? Do they behave the same? Doesn't matter. The Second Amendment statist. You know, the Second Amendment was actually intended to enshrine the sovereignty of the American people over the government and to protect them from the savage continent, which they were in the process of taming. It was written to apply only to citizens. We already have too many of those. But if you don't want to extend the right to bear arms to the invaders, well, then you're literally Hitler. This is the discourse. Rights for me, but not for thee. The modern conservative movement is just left-wing fascists that want to bring tyranny to the country at the speed limit. They don't understand, nor have even heard of the concept of inalienable rights. They are intellectual mental midgets masquerading as thought leaders. Midwit alert! Midwit alert! 110 IQ detected! <laughs> Be advised, patriots! Spike chromosomes are in the air, and they're going to inflate affect you. All the key midwit indicators are there. Modern conservatism, the use of the word modern to shield from criticism. Oh, I just mean modern conserv. I just mean modern feminism as if you have an understanding of a timeline. The whole Michael Malice. Conservatism is progressivism driving the speed limit. They love saying this whenever Republicans endorse something left wing, which is usually because they're conservatarians. And they love saying this as if they have some other solution. Oh, you're mad at conservatives for agreeing too much with progressives? Okay, so what's your alternative? Doing literally the same thing because my freedom, like letting gay couples defend their marijuana farms with AR-15s. They have no understanding. They've never even heard of the concept of inalienable rights. Oh, inalienable, wow. I didn't know that. You're telling me that now for the first time. Just the, the mental midgets thing, the intellectual mental midgets. You know that's a Reddit insult? If you Google that right now, best insults, that will come up. It's a tautology, intellectual, mental midget. What are you even saying? The recognition of all mankind's natural rights. Then Imagine starts playing by John Lennon and we all hold hands and we all sing songs. Freaking statist. We're an economic zone and a right zone. Freaking statist. I don't even know what's going on right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Libertarian culture, gun culture, it's so cringe. Maybe it always has been to a certain extent. Maybe it's a psyop to make gun culture unattractive and off-putting. You heckin' booger finger on the bang switch. Shut the f
fucked up, dude. I've been seeing these reels and shorts of like these skinny Antifa guys. Like it, it's got the same energy of the guy who kicked the woman in the downtown area and he wound himself up and he did like a little freaking kick or, or even the video of uh, the guy in the skateboard. And he's like, say the N word one more time. And the guy's just like, N word. And then he like hits him with the skateboard in the head and he's like, you can't be saying the N word, my guy. Like he consoles him immediately after. It's like, it's, it's aggression, but without actual aggression. You're performing it. It's theatrics. You're like acting as though you are capable of things like that, but it's in the most gay way possible. It's like insane. It's fascinating to see this kind of content. Like it's just gay behavior that is wearing the costume of violence to make itself appear cooler, more edgy, more attractive. But it's just cringe. Like there's no con conviction behind it. There's no aggression behind it. Um, it's just cope. Like, yeah, you're so edgy and rebellious for saying you're going to make the freaking government go away. Very threatening, very transgressive. Ideas that are actually dangerous don't need to present themselves with those theatrics. And I know we've talked about the Second Amendment before, how it's largely a cope. And I stand by all of that. But it's important to emphasize that what has emasculated men cannot be fixed with access to firearms. We are spiritually broken. We are completely domesticated. We have no real capacity for risk or discomfort or violence. And that's why a lot of the most popular content pertaining to guns looks exactly like you would expect it to look if that type of man were the biggest gun fanatic, which is that it looks like a bunch of little boys just playing around with guns. And of course, I'm not calling for anything. I'm not even taking shots. I mean, it's cool content, but there's something to be said about that broader conversation on the internalized destruction of American men the spiritual crisis. And we just have to emphasize that it doesn't matter what tools you give to that man. He himself is completely domesticated. He's a little boy. And it's not to say that the second amendment itself is like a cope. The whole thing was drawn up from the beginning and it was allowed to continue without ratification because the people in charge realized that it would be an effective like pressure release valve. And people would think to themselves, well, you know, the government would never try to become tyrannical because I've got all these guns and then they would just circumvent it. But I do think that both sides at this point are effectively content with the standoff. Like the government knows Knows that banning guns is not practical, it's bad optics, it's not even necessary to do what they want to do, and it's never stopped them, certainly. And what they want to do isn't stop crime or gun violence, by the way, obviously. Well, criminals don't care about laws. Uh, so when you ban guns, you're only disarming law-abiding citizens. Yeah, that means you, white man, you poor f bastard. That means you. You're the law-abiding citizen. You're the only person who has his day-to-day -day decisions and behavior affected by these laws. Like we said, blue states where they don't prosecute actual gun crimes, they'll have gun laws to disarm you specifically. What we talked about earlier is the red state, purple states, which are coming around to constitutional carry, uh, becoming those states, which now maybe do prosecute crime. Now all of a sudden they're saying, well, it shouldn't be a crime to just carry a gun because suddenly we care about the constitution, I guess. That's the key difference. Criminals don't follow laws. You think they don't know that? Those gun laws are for you and you only, patriot. They want to disarm the people. They don't want to just disarm you because they're like threatened by you, uh, but more so because they want you to be less equipped to defend yourself and, and your family from the consequences of diversity. I'm sure they're not like in love with Americans having so many guns, but America's a gun culture. It's always been a gun culture, and it became a gun culture precisely because we had to defend ourselves from the types of people that our tax dollars are now paying to import house, clothes, feed, you know, the whole nine yards. Well, most gun crimes are committed with handguns. Yeah, that's, that's why they don't ban handguns. They don't want to stop crime. Don't ever make the mistake of believing that these people are saying words to you as if they're real or have meaning. They just don't want you here. And you really have to digest that and adjust your worldview to accommodate that knowledge. But that is precisely why they want to ban AR-15s. They want you to have to stop a mob of organized Haitian gangsters with a handgun instead of an AR, while they also have handguns. It's the great equalizer, right? Suddenly doesn't seem so equal in that situation. Might need a little bit more there. Here's a fact, I don't know if you know this, but if you take American crime rates, violent crime, gun homicide, whatever, and you eliminate certain groups from the data to make our demographics look more like the European countries to which we're always compared, it's a virtual match. They're the same per capita. But then the other side of that coin is that if you bring back the silly demographics and you expand their proportion of the overall population to match, say, the demographics of some third world country, well, then curiously, those violent crime rates match there, too. It's fascinating because, see, I always thought that everyone's the same and a gun owner is a gun owner and we're all equal and we're all gun owners. 
And you run into a lot of problems like this when your axiom for viewing the world is only my frickin' pew pews. Anyone who owns a pew pew is friend, and those who are anti pew pew are enemy. More guns means less crime, are you sure? Do you think if we drop the pallet of Glock 17s into Memphis or Detroit or Chicago, do you think that's gonna cause fewer crimes? Even if we give it a second to kick in, we check back in six months later. You know, if I were a skeptic, I would say that more guns being associated with less crime probably is like, okay, well, more guns tends to mean more white people because we like to hoard guns. We like hunting. We're generally pro-Second Amendment. So it's really the guns because we also know that the greatest predictor for violent crime at a national level is not the proportion of a county that is not legal firearm owners, not even the proportion of the county that is in poverty. The strongest predictor, actually, is the proportion of the county that is composed of silly Americans. But it's easy to look at Montana, where two-thirds of the population owns a gun, and say, hell yeah, there's no Baltimore in Montana, and it's because criminals are afraid of all the guns. Are we sure? Is that what we're going with? But this is the discourse. The U.S. was founded by illegal immigrants with guns. Hey, uh, do you think, you know, you have an idea of what it means to become a nation or a people that you got brainwashed into collectivism? Oh my, shut up. You're not an actual person. There's no, the CIA has been monitoring my blood pressure and my cortisol levels through the camera and my phone and just creating a database of like what raises it the most. Like you're literally trying to kill me. You're treading on me. You are impeding my pursuit of happiness. You are threatening my life by making me a danger to myself. You are putting me into a self-defense situation. Libertarians are literally the most collectivist people I've ever encountered because they're all NPCs. You will never sooner see someone's brain just shut down and start spitting out nonsense like you will with a libertarian. Pitbull owners though, a close second. I'm really glad that I never smoked weed and got into arguments with my dad because otherwise my libertarian phase maybe would have lasted beyond 16, maybe even into 18. Who knows? That would have been a disaster. But yeah, I've been seeing these reels and these shorts where like some guys just playing around with guns. There's a whole genre of this content now and a lot of it's really cool, but then you see a lot of it and you've got these guys like soy facing. They're like, whoa, look at my freaking pew pew. Look at my shooty stick, shooty boy make big boom. And it's like, what are you doing? Like I love guns, I respect guns, I have many, but what is going on with the fetishizing? And I don't like the whole like leftist psychoanalyzing bit, but like, What's going on? Do you understand what you're talking about? You're talking about killing people. And I'm not moral fagging. I'm not like, hey, take it seriously and show some respect to the weapon. It's more like, why are you being gay about it? You see this a lot with any LARPing, whether it's operator LARPing, crusader LARPing, ha, they use Volt, but then they tone police me for saying something freaking racist on Twitter. Like, okay, tough guy, you're talking about killing people. Like, I'm the first guy, I'm the big believer that the first rule of gun safety is have fun, but you can't be cringe with it. That's the most irresponsible thing you can do with a firearm. Of all things that could go wrong with a firearm, that's the kingpin. Because when, you, when you're cringe with a gun, it's like a form of negligent discharge, actually. You are endangering the lives of those around you with your negligence. Because if you're being cringe with a firearm, you're going to discourage people from owning firearms. And that's bad, because then we're going to be dealing with a lot of new Americans exercising their right to keep and bear arms in the near future. And the country's a stockpile of weapons, so it should be very secure, right? A rifle behind every blade of grass. Well, what if there's like an illegal patriot there behind that blade of grass too, right? Because when invaders tunnel in and are granted access to those weapons and then law enforcement enforcement in the national security state are not there to stop crime, but to stop you from defending yourself, well, that's a recipe for disaster, anarcho-tyranny as it were, right? So my advice in the meantime would be take the money that you would spend collecting all your favorite guns from all your favorite movies and video games, get a few nice ones, and then spend the rest of that money on training. There are plenty of ex-military guys who will teach you the things that they've learned. They will give you that training over the course of a few days or longer. You can take their classes. Usually they're not advertised. You're gonna have to ask around, but pick a couple guys that you wanna train with and then just go do it. And be careful, you know, there are feds, there are lulberts, but otherwise you should pretty much be good to go. Uh, it'll be fun. And when we get to great again world, you will look back fondly on the experience. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, subscribe to the channel, turn post notifications on so that you are notified in the very frequent and consistent event that I post, and also share the video with your libertarian friend. Share the video with your illegal Haitian friend. Um, everybody needs to see this. What a crime it would be if more people were not aware of my opinion on literally any topic, which is why I have graciously shared it with you uh, today. So in summary, we are suspicious of democratizing access to firearms upon this influx of migrants into the country. Uh, that doesn't mean we're anti-Second Amendment. John Doyle's not a statist. Well, shut up. Uh, eh, veto, veto, fix it in post. I'm the, uh, we're just gonna jump to the next part. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a statist.
That is a fake word. That's not a real word. A statist is by definition a person who believes the government should exist. No, that's not what that means. Yes, it is. Shut up. Um, the next thing I was going to say is that we are dunking on libertarians for being cringe. Uh, we're dunking on people playing around with guns. Again, I'm a, you know, I'm the first one. Why am I summarizing the points? I'm the first guy to tell you, you know, you can like mess around with your friends with guns. That's been going on since there have been guns, guys doing cool stuff with guns, shooting interesting things. Uh, th but it's like this weird genre that I've been seeing recently where you've got guys that are just being like cringe about it. You know, <laughs> I'm literally just repeating the monologue because I feel like I have to clarify, you know, I don't want people getting angry. I, I can't take it to think that someone randomly who I've never met would be angry at me for something I've said on the internet. I couldn't take it. I, I, that's why I go AWOL. You know, I just, I don't know how to cope with this. I turn to all sorts of obscure methods. I'm giving you a two minute outro. You should be opening up a new tab. You should be going to heckoffcommy.com so that uh, you can check it out. You can enjoy the content. You can sign up. You can um, do whatever. Yeah, real. Okay, thank you so much for watching. May God bless America.